uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell uh, and do nothing but this kind of work. But this show is not about elder law, it's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations at the Senior Center, um, then you know that the, Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. If that's Ashland, that means right there. They don't wanna go move in with their kids. They don't wanna to go to assisted living. They wanna be right there. So the question for Frank and Mary is really, who are the people they need to know? And what are the programs they need to know about in order to stay right there, right in, right in beautiful Ashland? So as many of you know, um, well, some folks know me, everybody knows Steve Mitchell, who has been a, a selectman now for a long time. And he agreed to be my co-host. And I think, Steve, we've been doing this for over like two years now. It's yeah, been it's like, about two years, Arthur. Uh, it's been a to, lot, you know? And I mean, I, you know, our ratings are going up. I think they keep asking yeah. us to come back. You know, yeah. this is terrific. So, so you've got a terrific guest here whom I know we've had before, but whose presence is really, really appreciated um, now as, as, you know, we go into this kind of next step of, of the whole COVID pandemic. So, Steve, who do we have? So today we have uh, uh, Sergeant Ed Berman, and uh, I think, you know, people, uh, you know, you mentioned that people know who I am. I think, honestly, people, more people know who Ed Berman is than know who I am. But Ed's, uh, you know, Sergeant uh, on the Ashland Police uh, Force. Uh, he's also a nurse, uh, but he, currently uh, his role is as the uh, director of our COVID-19 uh, action uh, action and and uh, the response town response so that's uh, uh, who Ed Berman is and he's our guest today and so welcome Ed thank you for uh, for being here you've been on this show a couple times yeah. in the past and we always appreciate it uh, but today we want to focus on you know this is it's it's February the 3rd 2021. Uh, it's been a year that we've all been uh, dealing with COVID-19. Uh, and we're on the verge of the vaccine. Uh, the vaccine has started. It's phase two started on this past Monday. And how it relates to our audience, our demographics, is that um, seniors 75 years and older can now are now eligible to get vaccinated. So a couple of things I, I wanted you to, to address. Uh, number one, it seems like the, uh, the numbers the positive rate uh, of COVID-19 positive rates is going down. So what's driving that at this point? Uh, then of course, we wanna spend most of our time on the vaccine rollout. Um, you know, how, you know, what's going on with the, with the registration process? Uh, what's going on with locations? You know, there's, we know about Gillette, we know about Fenway Park, what's going on about lo more local vaccine locations. And then, uh, lastly, the kind of the, the protocols going forward and, and how do you anticipate relaxation of the COVID-19 protocols as we continue to get vaccinated? Okay, um, so I guess I'll start off um, with your first question. Um, are we definitely, we are definitely seeing a downward trend. Um, and what's really interesting um, is, you know, I'm, I'm a big data person, so I like to see look at graphs and kind of look at that flow, we can definitely see the, the peaks after um, holidays, um, long weekends. We definitely see a spike um, after those type of events. Um, one of the things though that we are seeing right now um, is the household transmission has really picked up. So, for example, if one person in the household becomes positive with COVID, <clears throat> we're definitely seeing that household spread um, because people are not isolating the way they really should. Um, so in that respect, we definitely see more, we have, yeah, we have less cases, but more cases in households. Instead of having just one, we'll have three or four in one household. Um, and again, it's very easy to spread and, you know, people put their guard down. Um, and the other issue that we still have to this day is the amount of asymptomatic people that 
are that are positive don't know they are or have been exposed to somebody and they're they're, they're obviously spreading COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. Good, thanks. So speak, go, going into uh, the discussion of the vaccine, um, you know, another component of, of information I think that might be important is how does the vaccine work? What does it do? Does it prevent you from getting the, uh, uh, the virus? Does it prevent you from, from transmitting it? Does it uh, prevent you from getting full blown um, COVID? So so the best way, the best analogy, you know, for, you know, for people to understand is that it, let's think of the flu shot, you know, so in a given year, you know, the flu shot is, you know, about 60 to 65% effective. But one of the things that we do know is that if you've received the flu shot and you do end up getting influenza, you're probably most likely not going to get it as bad as if you were not vaccinated against the flu. Same thing with the COVID vaccine. Now, with the Moderna and Pfizer, we know after the second dose, people are covered in the 90th percentile. But again, you still have that percentage where you could still get COVID. And all the experts are saying is that it, it, as if you've been vaccinated, most likely if you do get COVID, you're not going to get those serious effects where you have to be hospitalized and get those, you know, those really, really sick people that have to be on ventilators and things like that. Um, so that's the big positive about getting the vaccine. Um, and yeah, are there side effects? Absolutely. Just like even with the flu shot, some people might get a headache the next day, their arm might hurt, but the, the risk benefit is out far outweighs it why you should get the vaccine. That's, that's good. Can I, can I just ask Ed, have, have you found that a significant percentage of the population is, you know, kind of re refusing at this point to get the vaccine? Cause I know there's been so much press about it, but yeah. I, I, I know I talked to one and it's been, I, I talked to a police chief who said that in this particular police department, 50% of his police officers were refusing. Yeah, that was we, 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 astonishing to me. This is astonishing. It's funny, we are seeing that a little bit, but, but on the same token, 99% of the phone calls that I get are people that want it. So I'm spending a majority of my time working to get the vaccine here to Ashland and come up with other solutions. So uh, segueing into that conversation, Ed, uh, you know, we've gotten, I think, uh, a lot of mixed messages, uh, not from the town, but from, you know, the newspapers, certainly from the media, from, from the state, as far as the rollout of the vaccine, how much vaccine is available, when is it going to be distributed, what locations uh, are going to be available. Um, so can you speak to that? And I know you've been working tirelessly for, yep. you know, to, 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 to get, it, get the vaccine into Ashland. Right. So let's, all right, so let, let, let's take a step back uh, three or four weeks ago and I can kind of, I'd like to give you the play-by-play -play what actually in, happened and how we are trying to get around different things. So <clears throat> what happened was um, about, probably about four or five weeks ago now, um, the state sent out the information on getting first responders vaccinated. So obviously we were gonna be on that right away. We wanted, you know, to be able to, um, vaccinate our police and fire and EMS people. Um, and initially when our application went in, we were told that Ashland was too small of a community and they wanted us to partner. So we formed a partnership with Sherbin, Hopkinton, Westboro, and Northboro. And um, the Westboro Board of Health uh, director, he and he along with the fire chief in Westboro, they were able, because we had now had a, a larger sampling of people, we, we secured, uh, they were able to secure the vaccine for those five towns, first responders. And those clinics occurred about three weeks ago on a Monday and Tuesday, we got all the first responders that wanted to be done. <clears throat> um, so um, DPH has now also been encouraging these partnerships. Um, so we have since maintained a partnership with 
mainly with Westboro, Sherbin, and with um, Hopkinton. Um, so initially, uh, Hopkinton was trying to order vaccine for our over 75 people. And initially we were trying to get the Moderna vaccine. And there was a lot of little things that had to occur also. For example, I, I do want to give a shout out to John Brovelli, one of our paramedics at the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, he held a training about two weeks ago for all of our paramedics at our fire department so that they would be eligible to help us with um, giving vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, so they've all gone through the training. Um, and I've had multiple discussions with John about different things. Um, so one of the things that we found was that we could not get enough Moderna vaccine basically to share between the, the four towns. So um, John made a comment a couple of weeks ago to me, um, la actually last week, about our Mattech Corporation here in Ashland, mm -hmm. that they may have one of the freezers that can be that minus 70 to minus 80 degrees so that we could store potentially the Pfizer vaccine. So I reached out to them uh, last Friday and they have graciously agreed to let us use one of their freezers uh, in the event we can get the Pfizer vaccine. What's really good about the freezer that they're gonna allow us access to is that it's, it's under 24 hour surveillance. Um, it's on a generator. So we have the potential to now also order the Pfizer vaccine. So I worked with Sean McAuliffe, who's the Board of Health Director in Hopkinton. And uh, what's today? Today's Wednesday. On Monday, um, he ordered, and again, we don't have it yet, but he ordered a thousand doses of the Pfizer vaccine that we are potentially hoping to get here next week. Um, what we have done in Ashland in the meantime is we have created a shareable spreadsheet amongst all the departments, including Joey and Duffy. So if anybody over 75 wants to be added to our list in the event we do get any vaccine, we'll be able to reach out to them um, and schedule a time. Uh, again, we're not going to call anybody back yet until we have yeah. the vaccine in our hand. Right. Um, in the meantime, we are also encouraging people to look for other sources in the meantime, because we don't know what our supply chain is gonna be yet. So uh, there are people at the senior center that are helping people with that mass.gov site. Um, I do know a few people that have already gone to the Gillette site. Um, supposedly today, um, you might potentially see a couple of additional CVS locations open up. Um, but also the other thing that's important to mention here also is that we have three facilities in town. Uh, we have Waterview Lodge, the residents at Valley Farm and Mill Pond. And under the guidelines, they were required to partner not with the Board of Health, but with a CVS or Walgreens. And I'm happy to report that all three of those facilities all the staff and people that live there have already received their first dose. Um, so that's something that, you know, we made sure that was happening in the background. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And again, um, so our initial plan is hopefully if we are able to get some vaccine next week, um, obviously we're gonna split those doses with the other towns that we're partnering with. And again, one of the other great things about these partnerships is that when we can get additional vaccine, and we want to run clinics, it gives us the ability with that extra staff that we need and, you know, help people, helping people with registration. Um, the other thing that we've done this week is that we, Ashley and we just got access into the prep mod system with the state, which will allow us, once we're ready, we will be able to do online registrations for people with appointments and that system will also do the insurance billing for us. And in turn, when we get any reimbursements from the insurance companies, we'll be able to use those monies to pay our first responders and other people that are helping with these vaccine clinics that we hope to continue to have um, coming up. That's terrific. So Ed, just to, just to clarify, we are encouraging people uh, to do two things at this point, to register through the state. Correct. 
and also to register in essence with the town or notify the town through our community center, our, our, our elder affairs department Correct. to get on our list. Uh, and so we will we'll be able to coordinate as the vaccine becomes available locally. Now, Correct. if you if we're successful in getting a vaccine, as you as you say, next week, and we have a certain amount, uh, folks would be uh, notified that it's available. And we will be doing this in house. We Correct. will set up a clinic where so so that so the initial clinic what we're thinking of Steve is um, doing it potentially with um, Hopkinton that way we have the, the, the combined resources and we initially are talking about potentially at the Hopkinton Senior Center okay so the Hopkinton Senior Center is right in their downtown area just off of their downtown so uh, so it's close to Ashland residents uh, and uh, right. you know uh, no more than a, a couple miles from from home so that's great and we're in, and we're in constant communication so we're we have a lot of things happening in the background like um i have a list also you know while we have you on i'm also looking for volunteers um especially if there are any nurses um that are willing to volunteer at any of our um clinics we are keeping a separate spreadsheet myself and laura clifford our department secretary um, we're keeping a spreadsheet of people that might be available to help us, you know, a few hours here and there at the vaccine clinics. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and Ed, if, if someone wanted to call to volunteer, what, what number would they call? Um, they should call um, the town hall at 508-881-0100. And Laura's extension is 7128. Great. And we'll, we'll ask um, our folks here at at, uh, at the cable station to, to, to put that as a banner in case yep. people... Yeah, again, especially if there are nurses that live in town that are willing to help, you know, even a few hours here and there, um, we're going to need the vaccinators um, to help right. coordinate so, things. So, Ed, we're at the, um, as we mentioned earlier, the beginning of phase two, and phase two is, uh, you know, uh, uh, opened up the 75 and older uh, seniors. So as we move through phase two, and we've, we've vaccinated the, the older seniors, what happens next? Uh, then it will be the over 65 and people with comorbidities. Okay. So those would be the next people. And then the next group from there, which we were kind of hoping was going to be able to do it in a next couple of weeks. We were hoping that we would get to that point about our educators. Um, that was another partnership um, that we have formed. We formed a partnership with Framingham and with Holliston. Um, if when we get to that level, we are already planning a clinic for all of our school staff, including all of our school bus drivers, crossing guards, um, to hopefully maybe potentially get our schools reopened full time. Full time. That's that's terrific. So and and obviously, I mean, it's it's uh, it's clear that uh, everybody, you know, the demand for the vaccine is 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 widespread and you know how how do you best determine the order of, of vaccination and so on i you know i hopefully the availability matches the the need the demand and we can get our educators our administrators bus drivers facilities people all all vaccinated as soon as possible yeah yeah, uh, like I said, I, I think the demand is there. It's just we we just need to get our hands yeah. on the actual vaccine. So, Ed, going forward, this is this is a year that we've been living in the world of COVID nineteen, and uh, it seems like it's going to be another X period of time uh, while we go through the whole vaccination process. Uh, but at some point, it's we're going to get beyond this, and you know. So, what is your speculation? I know. Uh, you know, to assume uh, a, a particular date is unreasonable. But at some point, you know, as more and more people get vaccinated, uh, presumably we'll, we'll be relaxing protocols and some of the restrictions and so on. So what's your, what's your thoughts on that? By the way, I was, um, plenty of, when I was watching one of the national news folks and they were asking Dr. Fauci when he, when he was thinking he could buy his first baseball tickets because he's like a baseball <laughs> a, junkie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, honestly, I think we're at least a year out um, from relaxing a lot of the standards. Um, 
you know, it's funny, you know, it, it's also hard because every state does them a little different. It's not like we have one standard across every state. You know, mm -hmm. Massachusetts is different than New Hampshire. I mean, it's um, honestly, I, I think we're about a year out, a year away. Um, you know, because even Dr. Fauci is even saying, you know, he really thinks we need to get at least 75% of the population vaccinated. Um, do I think that's a realistic goal? Absolutely. If we can get the vaccine, I think we could be having clinics every week. Yeah. Well, you know, our demographic, of course, is, is uh, at this point, is it uh, our seniors, elders, uh, old folks? That's our demographic. And, you know, many of them, of course, are they've been housebound for for pretty much a year. Many of them don't have necessarily the the family and friends support uh, that you, we would like to see. Uh, of course, our community center has essentially been closed for a year, and that was a, a, a really important part of many people's day-to-day -day lives. Um, so we're literally talking, in, in your estimation, another year? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, one thing I one thing I would also like to point out, um, just you know, I know it's early to come out, knock on wood here. Um, you know, our three facilities in town, everyone's been vaccinated now, just with their first dose, and in those three facilities, um, I would say we've been they some. So one of you lodge was done almost four and a half weeks ago. Um, we've had no new cases in any of our three facilities yeah. since they've been vaccinated. Yeah, well, that's great to hear. And I know when we when COVID started a year ago, Waterview Lodge was was an epicenter for for Ashland, right? right? Yep. So, uh, so that's good to hear. So, yeah. Art, a question for you now. You know, as as you have done, you know, some of these shows in other communities. You know, similar stories going on. What what's your take? Right. You 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 just you've got you've got this you've got this great effort, and you know, Ed really exemplifies what is going on. You've got a, communities where there's in the communities that are working the best. You've got you somebody stepped up right at the beginning and said, "We need a leader here. We need a kind of a central person," uh, and those people are really are really doing it. And but and now everybody is kind of in that boat. They're trying to coordinate these lists. You know. But it really varies depending on the situation. So, in, you know, in, in, in our area where there's such population density, there are a lot of these kinds of partnerships that are happening, right? And I know I was actually, we were interviewing somebody from um, uh, Westboro the other day in the Westboro, because I have a show in Westboro with the Westboro fire chief, and they were kind of talking about the rollout there. And there were these possibilities all over the map. Now, in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, you know, you're just kind of out there so that, you know, there's one location, all the vaccines going to run through, you know, through in, in Nantucket, it's all the hospital, you know, they're not running it through any uh, of the, um, of the, uh, um, the, pharmacies. the uh, pharmacies or any of these other players, you know, yeah. but it, it, there were just, it's just a common theme. And, and of course, everybody, I think, I'm glad you raised the question. Everybody is saying, oh my God, I got to get out of the house. When am I going to get out of the house? You know? But I think, as as Ed was explaining, it may it may very well be that even in July, you're still going to have a, a nervousness, you know, about about COVID, which means you want to make sure that you're vaccinated, right? There's going to be a nervousness about people who still haven't been vaccinated, and 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 you know, the masks are still going to be prevalent and stuff, you know. But but hopefully, by that point, at least things are opening up more so that with masks, a lot more stuff is allowed, you know, yeah. but, I, we, but, but, but I think that's kind of the lesson learned from all of this, you know, and, and I'm glad that you pointed out and that Ed pointed out this whole issue of the vaccine protects you, but it clearly isn't, it clearly, it, there's nothing about being protected that means you can't spread it, right? But yeah. the data is out. So you're still going to have to, the good news is you're going to be a little more free, but the, but there's a piece you're going to have to pay attention, right? So I think that's kind of the theme. Yeah. Well, Ed, I can't. One of the, I, I was just. So one of the thing, one of the thing that I do want to comment. So one of the things that Joanne Duffy commented about was she was actually glad that people were calling to put their name on a list. She says because it was their opportunity to even talk to people, some seniors in the community, and just you know let them know if they need anything, they can call there, and 
you know, you know, and I just want to remind people that too, you know, people just even need to talk to someone. There are people at the community center that are willing to talk to you on the phone and, you know, help you with any problems you might have. I'm, I'm help glad you, you mentioned that, that Ed. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ed. I think it's, uh, uh, I had a conversation as well with Joanne about uh, with the process of, of, of calling in and uh, it's really opening up a lot of people, new people, to what the senior center, the community center has to offer. A lot of people aren't necessarily connected to the center at this point in time. But uh, so, you know, hopefully it, uh, it provides options for folks to, uh, to engage with the, with the community. So, Ed, I can't thank you enough for, you know, both as a, as a community member and as a select board member, you know, all the work that you've done on this. I mean, it's, you know, it is uh, yeoman's work. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're not getting a whole lot of sleep uh, these days, but uh, you know, it, it is appreciated. And uh, you know, so thank you. I just want to give a shout out to, to the school nurses who are by my side every day. Where yeah. We communicate every day. And uh, a couple of other people that are helping with some contact tracing. Yeah, that's well, great. That's, I appreciate it. That's great. So, Steve, this has really been terrific. Ed, you know, thank you so much for being willing to come on. We know, you know, you got a day job that's a really busy day job. I'm sure that we're, that Steve's going to be inviting you back. Steve, yeah. you know, I think that this is, you know, I, it, as Ed points out, this is going to be a long haul. So to the extent that through these shows, we can really be providing updates for people and get, giving people a sense of kind of what kind of what's next, because it has changed so much. And there's so much confusion that, you know, the new stuff coming up all the time. Yeah. It's really, really important. So I hope this really shows, and thanks to the folks at Ashland Cable, this really shows the value of this kind of local cable. So show. just and on a side great. note, uh, Art, uh, today happens to be Barbara Chisholm, the executive director of WACA, uh, her birthday. So let's wish uh, Barbara a happy birthday. As long as I don't have to sing. No Barbara. singing, happy birthday and best wishes to Barbara. Happy, happy birthday to Barbara and thanks for everything, you know, and I hope she's getting her vaccine soon. So thank you very much, Ed. Thank All you. Right, you're welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this show. We're gonna we're gonna keep you in touch. Steve's gonna keep dragging Ed Bremen back from his day job <laughs> to talk to you. And we'll see you in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Bye.